Hello, it's Tony here. Um, I've spent much too much time recently defending British journalism, European journalism, mostly against charges of anti-Americanism. So I think it's, it's time to consider what is the role of um, the press what is, and what is good journalism. What is clear to me is that in a democracy we, we need a, a press who will hold government to account. We need investigative journalism. Um, we don't want to be like in the, the Middle East or, or, in, or in communist countries where the press is just a spoke, the, the, the mouthpiece of the, of the regime. Uh, that's not right. We have to accept that government are always going to try to manipulate the press. Uh, certainly in Britain we have um, spin doctors and that is their role, trying to influence journalists and get them to say what the government wants to say that has to be resisted as far as possible. So, a few examples of, uh, let's have examples of journalism. Uh, in the 80s, The Guardian uh, newspaper um, alleged that a Conservative minister who was in charge of arms procurement had broken rules by allowing a, a Saudi arms dealer to pay for his stay at the, the Paris uh, Ritz and there was a television uh, documentary on it as well. Uh, the minister, Jonathan Kinn, resigned and made a very pompous speech about how he was going to fight to cut out the cancer of bent and twisted journalism. He took the, the newspaper to, to court, but they were able to prove, and it, he claimed that his wife paid for the hotel visit, that they were able to prove that she was in another country at the time. Uh, he was found guilty of perjury and went to prison for 18 months. So there we see how government pressure being resisted by journalists, as, as it should be. Um, in Britain we think that um, war reporters and foreign affairs reporters should get to where the action is, is happening. We are very dismissive of hotel journalism journalists who sit around drinking in the bar all day and then when the proper journalists come back they just copy their stories. So that's Mar Martin Bell of the BBC in, in the Balkans got actually a little bit too close to where the action was and got himself shot. That's going a bit far but we do expect our journalists to go wherever it is happening. So this is where is he? On the other side. That's John Snow of ITN amongst a group of Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Now, let's compare that with uh, the less, less good journalism. Um, there's an account in this book here of where um, a journalist from um, ABC just turned up on a plane, um, what's his name, Barry Dunsmore, he was the State Department correspondent from ABC, turned up on a plane in, in El Salvador, got a, um, a National Guardsman to stand behind him and did a piece to camera making it look as though uh, he was he, he'd found things out for himself but all he was doing was re reading out the briefing he'd had from the State Department so American viewers that, that, that night thought that they were getting honest journalism um, but they were just getting uh, uh, someone reading out what, what the government wanted him to say which well I know what I think about that sort of journalism, but that's not the worst thing about um, El Salvador. No, much worse than that is what happened to Ray Bonner of the New York Times. A little bit of background, El Salvador, the United States were arming and training the El Salvador military and they were fighting left-wing uh, rebels. Um, but as anyone who wanted, who, as anyone knew who actually went anywhere near El Salvador, 
there, there was terrible human rights violations on behalf of the military, death squads, and the United States were fighting a losing battle in, in pretending that these death squads had nothing to do with the military. Uh, it was crucially important to America to, to keep that hushed up because they wanted to continue funding, funding the military. But uh, the world's press descended, or some of them descended on El Salvador after members of the military, led by Roberto Dobison, murdered Archbishop Oscar Romero. So, John, John Snow of ITN was there, and he was um, going everywhere, interviewing Dobison, interviewing uh, the um, American ambassador, and then also going and, and, and seeing things at uh, visiting the, 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 rebel, the, the rebels. Raymond Bonner of the New York Times and Alma Guillermo Prieto of the Washington Post went to El Mazote, the scene of a massacre, where um, government soldiers had um, in cold blood murdered between 700 and 900 civilians, mostly women, children and, and, and old men. Um, and um, so they reported on this, they went to the scene of the massacre and as far as I'm concerned what they did was excellent journalism in that they brought to light uh, the terrible uh, atrocities being committed by US armed and trained um, forces but when they got uh, back the attitude of the US government was to pretend the massacre hadn't taken place and that there, were, um, and there was no evidence of um, mass murder by um, El Salvadoran troops. Elliot Abram said, said as much to the US Congress um, but he, he now admits that um, the information he gave them was, was not complete. One thing he hadn't pointed out was that no one from the US Embassy had been anywhere near El Mazote, so they really hadn't got a clue what, what happened. Though they had they had their suspicions. They had their suspicions clearly. Um the government didn't stop at that. They uh, sought to discredit the journalists. The Wall Street Journal joined in and said that they'd been too credulous, too willing to uh, believe what they um, what they've been told, and as a as a result of this, the, the two journalists were re were reassigned. Um, only ten years later, when the um, evidence of the massacre was absolutely overwhelming, and we knew that it was the Al Qatel um, battalion, uh, a US tra US tra of US trained soldiers, who had carried it out. Only then did Bonner get his apology um, and. Re and re rejoin the, uh, the New York Times. So, um, in conclusion, um, where, where is the good journalism? Is it the, the Bonner um, going and reporting back on the, um, the massacre? Is it uh, Dunsmore of ABC who pretends that he's uh, being a journalist when really he's just being a government mouthpiece or was it courageous journalism on behalf of the editors of the New York Times and the Washington Post to reassign their journalists I know what I think <laughs>